Ladies, gentlemen, and Haradrim of all ages with the PTR for the major overarching changes of Diablo 4 Season 4, now being live for coming up on nearly a day now, we've gotten to spend a fair whack more time exploring and learning and understanding the various changes and systems at play within this new version of the game. And one of the biggest overarching things going on here is the changes to itemization. So now that I've actually spent a good deal of time and a great deal of materials actually rolling things and checking them out, I'm going to give a bit of a more thorough and specific review of this this part of the changes, my thoughts, any changes I would make, what's good, what's bad, just all of it. So let's first go over what has changed, starting with the overarching number of affixes on each piece of equipment now being different. Now rares, yellow items, have two affixes on them when they drop, legendaries have three, uniques have their own set of four, just like before, those are the same. What this means though is straight away that rares are just no longer a thing that you care about at all anymore once you start being in the later stages of the game with legendaries falling down all around you. This is actually sort of nice, it lets you just completely ignore rares unless you want to manually salvage them for more Veiled Crystals, and Veiled Crystals we will talk a fair bit about more soon. On top of these changes, now when an item drops it has an RNG chance for any or all of the affixes on it to roll as greater affixes. A greater affix is guaranteed to maximum roll, but then also has 50% bonus effect higher than a normal max rolled affix too. You can get this on anything from strength, to bonus life, to cooldown reduction, to fury generation per second, to skill or passive ranks, any affix that can drop naturally can be a greater affix, and every affix on a single piece of gear is capable of rolling as a greater simultaneously if you happen to get absurdly lucky. I actually really, really genuinely like the system, mostly because it does two things. It creates a bit of a more easily recognizable moment of excitement when the loot is dropping itself. You can tell an item has a greater affix. You look at it, if it has a good one, you give it a little fist bump in the air type thing, you know? It just, it feels good. The second side of it then is it acts as a sort of chase mechanic longer term. Because because there is no direct way to farm greater affix gear, it means that you can't rely on them existing. But this means that you focus on every other method of upgrading, you temper, you masterwork, and then if you happen to have an item drop with good greater affixes, you have a sizable upgrade to start working on fresh. Because again, greater affixes are genuinely very impactful when they exist and when they're on the right stats, and more importantly, I feel strong enough without loads of greater affixes, they don't feel like some sort of stupid RNG requirement to exist in the world, so much as just an RNG chance at particularly extreme bonus power, and I really like that concept quite a lot. Then we have tempering, which is the next stage of gear. Once you have chosen a piece of equipment that you actually want to enhance and use, tempering is what you do next. There are loads of tempering recipes in the game, and a number of very class agnostic ones, but many class specific ones too. In the PTR, we are given legendary rarity versions of many class specific temper recipes, and these do get extremely powerful if you get good rolls with them. On which note, it appears that the recipes themselves will have a rarity too, I had a few drop from doing Nightmare Dungeons and I had a lower rarity one drop of a recipe that I already had too, which had lower ranges of the same affixes. So based on this, theoretically the idea is that we will find them as we level, and as we reach the higher ends of World Tier 4 is when the legendary recipes will start dropping. Anyways, for a look at the system in a bit more depth, it sort of borrows from the way that legendary aspects are split up, giving each piece of gear different categories that it can choose from. Weapons have one weapon affix and one offensive affix that can be tempered on, as an example, and what this does is randomly choose one of the affix from the list on the recipe that you select and roll within their displayed range. You can also re-roll which of these it does up to six times depending on the piece of equipment to try and get different affixes from the list or different rolls within the range. This feels like a much more involved and engaging version of the old equipment upgrade system. Through this though there is some RNG involved of course, you can thoroughly customize each piece of equipment for your very specific own build. With weapons able to get things like ability size increase or number of projectiles, chance to double strike a chance for single target skills to cleave instead. Massive things that completely change your gameplay like that, if stacked hard enough, could be complete game changers. The other slots are for the most part more standard things that were, or still are, normal affixes. Things like general damage increases, resource generation or cost reduction, resistances, which are actually really nice for your defensive tempering slots, or sometimes even just full on ranks of passives. For example, I have five ranks of concussive for Barb from my gear, which just gives me a ridiculously high lucky hit chance to stun enemies currently. Overall, I'm really fond of the way this system seems to be put together though, I do think that it does have two major downsides. The first being that through the concept of limited tempering rerolls, you can pretty much brick 
an item, which is not a fun feeling at all, especially if it's something that had greater affixes on it that did actually matter to you. That said, it doesn't become unusable, it's just sad that you can get RNG'd out of an incredible item becoming a perfect one, and instead just sort of winding up staying as an incredible one forever. My personal idea for changing this would be to maybe add in some sort of specific uber endgame boss that when you kill them, quote unquote, cleanses a singular item of your choice, which would reset the tempering resets or something along those lines just so you can get more rolls on it at the cost of having to undertake a more difficult fight. It would probably work quite well for that, really. The other main concern that I have is just the absolute speed at which this eats Veiled Crystals as a process. Veiled Crystal costs in general seem to be really nasty in this PTR with the specific values they've chosen, with Legendary imprinting costing upwards of 70 for some item slots, which is actually obscenely nuts. And it's just a currency that is still used for so, so many different things within the game too, that even with increased drop rates, it really just stands out as something that we need a lot more of in a lot easier way of actually getting it. This could be easily avoided though on the PTR by just making bonus characters, but of course it won't work that way in the actual game. So what I really need here is for the developers to look at this, hear the way that the players are responding to the way that the Veiled Crystal economy is just way too rough and that they adjust the costs of all these systems out of it from the player feedback. They have a system here that heavily incentivizes the concept of long-term grind because of RNG rolls and randomized systems for extra player power. What they need to do is to make it accessible to roll these gambles as frequently as possible. They need the materials to be plentiful and for the grind itself to be the actual RNG rolls, not the materials so that you actually spend your time either rolling or playing, not grinding for materials so that you can engage with stuff. You don't want the grind to be the materials, you want the grind to be the actual system. Then we have our last real major change to items, which is masterworking. This is considered sort of the final stage of gearing and has mostly replaced the old equipment upgrades in function. The currency that you need for this comes from the pit, a new activity added in season four that I will be talking about in its own video actually later on today. But what you need to know in relation to this about the pit is that tier one to 20 of that activity drop a material that lets you masterwork your equipment. When you masterwork a piece of equipment, rank one, two, and three will just increase all affix rolls by 5% across the board. Rank four will then choose a random affix on that piece of equipment and increase the singular one by 25%. It can be one of the base affixes, it can be one of the ones that you've tempered onto the piece of equipment, it can be a greater affix, which would then boost it even further because of the higher base value under it. These things can get actually ridiculous now in ways that I'm definitely very intrigued by. Then you enter the second tier of masterworking where the same thing happens again, sort of, except the material is different. This new material comes from tier 20 one plus of the pit activity. Again, rank five, six, and seven are just 5% all affix upgrades. Then eight is again a 25% increase to one of the affixes at random. This then repeats one final time and rank 12 is of course the maximum rank. Theoretically though, with another tier of resource that will unlock in a further tier of the pit too. Once you get to rank five upgrades and above though, there becomes an increasingly high chance of failure when you attempt to masterwork. If it fails, it will use your material but doesn't upgrade and you have to try again, though it does increase your chance of success every time that you fail. You are likelier to succeed every time that you don't. The point of this mechanic overall though is to give you just a slowly scaling general stat upgrade as you complete the pit as an activity once you hit level 100 or so and masterwork your already good gear. But then it adds another layer of RNG too with the 25% increase to a single affix once every four upgrades. This creates the ridiculous ceiling possibility for an item of something like cooldown reduction rolled as a greater affix that then got masterwork chosen three times, which would be 150% of a max rolled cooldown reduction affix, then increased by 25%, then increased by 25%, then another 25%, not to mention that it also gets nine separate 5% masterwork increases as well from the normal upgrades, and you can see just how nutty gear is actually capable of getting now within this new system. And that's the main reason that I actually really like where this has gone and what it is looking to be. The required floor for gear to be good in the first place is still very accessible to every player in the game quite easily, but the players who get particularly lucky or the ones who just dedicate so much time that they basically manufacture luck will be able to create godly items that will make them feel obscenely powerful. In my opinion, that's fun, especially in a seasonal resetting system in a game. That's exactly what I want. That way we all get a fun power chase that does give us increasing gains, but then it resets before you get too close to finishing the maximum of what you can do and before it gets stale as a result. That's the goal here. That's how you keep people engaged in a seasonal system. That said, there are a couple of further notes that I do have for masterworking as a system. The first being that it is worth noting how this stuff all affects uniques and uber uniques too. Both of these can drop with greater affixes on them, depending on RNG. So that does add a new factor of grind for these items. Then on top of that, they cannot be tempered. So no 
bonus affixes, but they can be masterworked for the bonus effectiveness from that. As well for masterworking, there is a reset button on this mechanic, so let's say that you really want all the fourth tier upgrades to be on one specific affix, and if they don't roll the way that you like, you can just press this button, reset it, and the item will still be fine to be built on, but you do have to start again, you lose the materials that you spent upgrading to begin with, but you can start again, so it's a nice feature. Then my real gripe with this mechanic of masterworking, again, actually comes with the materials required for it. I mentioned earlier that tier 1 to 20 of the new pit activity drops the first rank of material, called Obdesite. Tier 21 plus drops Ingolith, which is the next tier of material, and I haven't reached the next section yet, but I assume that there is a further material and tier above this too. The issue, though, is once you hit tier 21 and up of the pit, Obdesite will not drop at all anymore, nothing above that point. The issue with that is, of course, twofold. One, I want to masterwork multiple pieces of gear at the same time. Some of them require Obdesite, some of them require Ingolith. I can't get both of those materials from the same activity anymore because of the way they've split this off. Two, it means that regardless of how powerful you get, the best you will ever be able to farm an Obdesite is from a tier 20 pit run. There's just no faster way that will exist, and that is, in my eyes, just a pure mistake. When you introduce a new material into the same line of upgrading, you should still give smaller amounts of the old material. Doing higher difficulty runs of the activity should give the new reward sure, but it should also give some of the old reward, but not one or the other. There should be no logical gameplay incentivized reason for a player who overpowers tier 20 of the pit to want to do tier 20 of the pit. That just seems like a bad choice to me. It incentivizes people doing things that could feel tedious. You want people to be incentivized to do the hardest version that they can at any point. So I really hope that they reconsider this one and start moving around it so that they actually get the materials from every tier of the activity, because otherwise it just feels weird. But honestly, outside of that, I'm really into this. All these changes to itemization. Even enchanting feels better now. Getting the affixes that you want can definitely be tough with enchanting. It does feel like some affixes are much rarer to see than others, like bonus skill ranks on gloves now, but this is partially evened out by enchanting costs seeming to be capped out at about 1.7 million per reroll. That's not negligible by any means, but it was easy to run an item up and do 7 plus million per roll before if you were really committed to not giving up on it. As well, it helps that enchanting is now just a part of the actual means to increasing the power of a gear, rather than actually being the actual requirement for a piece of gear to be perfect to begin with. All in all, the new system serves to give the players more control over their individual builds, to make the itemization process from top to bottom more engaging and interesting, while also making it simpler and easier to understand. Personally, I'm a really big fan of all of that in concept and in the way that they've executed it, except for the gripes that I've had. I have mentioned a few of them, and I think even past those, there are some numbers that could definitely use some shifting here or there, of course, but as a general set of mechanics being added in, for such a large, full, systemic redesign of the game, I really, really like how this feels to engage with myself in the PTR. And that just about does it for today, then, everyone. I hope this has helped express a bit of how this feels for anyone who is unable to take part in the testing, and if you are someone who's in the testing as well, what are your own feelings on all this? Let me down down in the comments down below. Like if you liked the video, subscribe to the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next Next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos, dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes, bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice to reiterate that it is nice to look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage. Is uh goodbye.